you're singing to people, you know? It's an emotional thing. You're not normal if you sing to people. It's nerve wracking. You're, you're putting, you're literally putting yourself out to hundreds and thousands of people. If your behavior and interests tend to rub people the wrong way, don't be disheartened. It might just be your greatest gift. You can't write a hit song unless you're weird. I grew up in Scarborough. I dropped out of high school, me and my friends. We just left home, man. We just started living the downtown life. I knew that I really wanted to be something. I just didn't know really what. Like everyone else, many singers' journey began with confusion. Many of them didn't know what they wanted to do, and this is a common sentiment shared by great singers. I felt like I've, I've experienced enough in my before my career started in my, at that point, 21 years of living. When I say this a lot, I, I have enough, enough experience to to write the rest of my, my catalog, I feel, mm. um, and continue whatever story that is that I'm telling. Many people tend to lament their life experiences, but there is an alternative approach not to complain, but to leverage those experiences. There exists a profound connection between great songs and the personal life experiences of the songwriter. Some of you might know, some of you might not know, but I hadn't left Toronto for like 21 years, man. I stayed home. First time ever on a plane was like my first tour a couple years ago. Doing great things requires you to put in some serious elbow grease. It means giving up a few things like vacations, hobbies, and those lazy moments. After all, artists need some peace and quiet to create their masterpieces. How can you expect to do amazing work if you're always distracted? But I'm curious to know, what would you tell your 17-year-old self who left home, moved into a small apartment with a friend, you know, eventually that young Abel was going to become the Super Bowl halftime star. You've accomplished so much. What would you tell that kid? Um, don't quit. Mm. Just don't quit. When it comes to writing a hit song, it's not about learning all the tricks right from the start. Not at all. The first step is simply to make a commitment to yourself. No matter what happens, you won't give up. Tell yourself that you might think about quitting a thousand times a day. But when the day is done, you'll always make one crucial decision above all. And that's the decision not to quit. I think we went on for about like almost a year with no pictures. Everyone's like, Yo, who is this guy? Who's the weekend? How does he look? Being mysterious can definitely add a unique quality to a song. You might wonder how, but sometimes feelings can't be explained through reason alone. When you sense that you're a bit of a secret to your listeners, it can actually boost your performance. Another great thing about it is that it can help ease any initial stage jitters. Especially in your early years, confidence can be a bit shaky and handling criticisms might not be a strong suit. So staying a little hidden and mysterious can act as a shield protecting you for a while. And the third thing is that people get more excited about your songs. At the beginning of my career, because nobody knew how I looked as well, it was because of, you know, Daft Punk and a lot of artists that like to be enigmatic and mysterious. And fans didn't really see how I looked until my first show. As a songwriter, your main goal is to get people excited. After all, what's the point of writing a song if it doesn't stir up some emotions? People have their own shits going on, and when they finally have a moment to spare, they often turn to music to lift their spirits, connect, and escape from that shits. Music is their remedy. So when you're writing, always keep in mind just how crucial your songs can be for them. You know, I came in as, you know, my big bro, and, you know, showed the world you know what i could do and then you know from then on it's been like he's always been supporting me and uh, you know i've always been you know supporting him and behind the scenes we're still like very close at the time we were just just building our relationship with the weekend kind of just just talking to him for the first time and, and uh it was a song that he had the hook and, the, and his verse was done already and uh i was like yo this song is brilliant i mean listen to the, the way it starts and what he's saying and the sentiment in the song you know that's where i'm at in my life i mean they're loving the crew it's not just about me i really love the idea of connecting with someone who shares the same interests as you it's wonderful to be able to discuss your ideas with them when you do incredible things happen and you no longer feel like you're on this journey alone your body can often tell you things you didn't even know and it's a reminder that creativity doesn't always flourish in isolation you donated meals to frontline workers you've been honoring black owned restaurants can you talk a little bit about why that was important for you to do that 
I see that people are struggling and I want to, I just want to help. I've been in that position myself and I know what it feels like. I, I never really had money growing up, so giving away isn't, isn't hard for me. It's very easy. When it comes to writing great songs, the process doesn't end with just putting words on paper. It's not about whether what you write becomes the greatest song of all time. It's about how long it resonates. You see, if you're not a very pleasant person, your audience might remember your less desirable traits when they listen to your music. Emotions play a huge role in how they perceive your work. To truly connect with your audience, you need to empathize with their struggles and build an emotional bridge between you and them. By doing so, even if you happen to write a song that's not your best, your fans won't abandon you. They'll stick with you, offering support to help you improve and learn from your mistakes. People are generally less forgiving when it comes to jerks. The downtown life, um, growing up in Scarborough uh, with my mom, who I put through hell, but she's my biggest inspiration. Thank you, mom. Appreciate it. It's good to have a good team, especially a team that you you grew up with. I feel like everybody kind of loses who they are when they start cutting the people that made them who they are. And finally, as you climb the ladder of success and become someone as popular and celebrated as The Weeknd, it's crucial to remember the people who played a role in your journey. The Weeknd makes an important point. Losing touch with those who supported you along the way can result in losing your sense of identity and ultimately everything you've worked for. So, as you reach new heights, never forget your roots, the friendships, and the teamwork that got you where you are today. It's a key ingredient in maintaining both your success and your authenticity. Lamar Taylor, my best friend, he, uh, I convinced him to drop out of high school with me. Uh, <laughs> now he's my creative director and I hope uh, there's no regrets at this point. So. This is precisely why it's essential not to forget the people who have been there for you because the work of a single person relying solely on their own abilities tends to lack something in every industry, not just in music. When you collaborate with others, they bring in a wealth of knowledge and experiences you might not possess. It's like mixing their uniqueness with yours, creating a special quality that solo work often lacks. Many artists may like to claim that they created something entirely on their own and it's what our ego often craves. However, the truth is, this ego can hinder our growth. If so many successful artists emphasize the value of collaboration, why should we resist it? After all, isn't the goal to create a hit song or produce exceptional work? Embrace the reality that your thoughts and emotions alone might not be enough. There is a world of insight and creativity to be explored when you work with others. I want to thank my fans who have been with me from day one. <laughs> XO to the OD, so I love you guys very much. I wouldn't be here without you and I think it's going to be a long-term relationship between me and you. <laughs> so when you are working on a song, what's the song with Kendrick called? Sidewalks. Right, so when you're working on that, it does. Have you got him in, in your mind? Is it? Is it? Do you, do you yeah. see a part for him straight away? Hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. And when you hear it, you'll you'll know exactly um, why. How's the experience working with him? He's a genius. Mm. He is really a genius. He's writing his verse in his head. Um, he's going to his phone, look at it a few, you know, and then put it back in. Start walking around. I can, he then at one point went into the studio booth yeah. and like closed the door, and like I can hear him like yelling. <laughs> his verse in, in, like in his head. Now that you've seen The Weeknd's songwriting prowess, it's time to dive even deeper into the world of musical genius. Watch I Spice being a songwriting genius for five minutes to discover the secrets of another iconic artist. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more musical insights.